Good morning and welcome to Westside Baptist Church. This is Sunday School on October 31st, Halloween 2021. And we are in session three talking about walking in confidence. And today we're talking about having confidence in the midst of, of conflict. And our lesson is about trusting God when conflicts disrupt our relationships with each other. And we don't all respond to conflict the same way. Many of us avoid it at all costs and others seek to win every conflict at any cost. While there are times when we must stand our ground, often conflicts about issues come from personal desires, and God calls us to place the needs of others before our own. And doing this, is called personal sacrifice. But even then, we can trust that God will provide what we need to live our lives in obedience to Him. The scriptures that we're going to be talking about today come from Genesis chapter 13, verses 5 through 11 and 14 through 18. Now, remember in our lesson last week, Abram, Abram and Lot had gone down to Egypt because of the famine. And they did not ask God what to do. And then Abram asked his wife to say that she was his sister, and that caused a lot more problems. Uh, Abraham, Abram, had problems with fear, fear of the famine and fear for his life there in Egypt. But God watched over them and uh, and the Pharaoh told them to leave. And they did leave with a lot of gifts. And Abram and Lot were both rich in animals, in gold and silver, both. <clears throat> but the Pharaoh let them leave with everything that they had. And they went back to the south side of the land of Canaan. So before we start, let us pray. Our Lord and God, we thank you that we can have all of the confidence in you that we can trust your word and we thank you that we have your word and the holy spirit to show us the things that we need to learn lord and help us to understand lord that we are to put others above us their needs above our needs and we will be blessed for that. Now we ask that you would guide us, and I pray this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Advocate, and Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, <clears throat> uh, Abram and Lot came back 
and this is what happened here in in the book of Genesis chapter 13 verses 5 through 8 and Lot also which went with Abram had flocks and herds and tents and the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together for their substance was great so that they could not dwell together and there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle and the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled then in the land and Abram said unto Lot let there be no strife I pray thee between me and thee and between my herdmen and thy herdmen for we be brethren so they both had flocks and that would be sheep or goats or both and they both had cattle or oxen or both and at that time the measure of wealth for the nomadic people was the number of animals that they had and they both had a lot and they also had had many tents that house the people of their families and the slaves and so because of of the situation with not having having the grazing pastures or the water resources uh, there was strife fighting among the herdmen and also with the Canaanites and the Perizzites there just wasn't enough because the other ones who are the Canaanites and the Perizzites had the fertile land and had most all of of the water resources so because of this and the famine uh, there was conflict and it started in the pasture lands but uh, later on it was between Abram and his nephew Lot because of what was you know going on there was not enough water for their animals or grazing so they also had the Canaanites that they had to deal with and they were evil people idolatrous and they were an enemy of the Israelites now God had brought Abram to the land and his seed was was going to have that land but it was not his land yet in in Genesis chapter 15 God told him know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and shall afflict them 400 years so even though Abram was in the land that God sent him to it would be about 400 years from the time that he was there that his descendants would actually take over the promised land for now he was back in the promised land and uh, it would only be for a while 
God was very gracious to the Canaanite people, and uh, he, he gave them plenty of time to repent of their sin, but a time of judgment was coming, and that would be about 400 years. But Abram wanted to avoid any conflict in his family. He loved Lot and didn't want to quarrel with him or have his men and Lot's men have them quarrel. And so he said to Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee. So he proposed a way to solve this problem and uh, prevent future conflicts between himself and, and Lot because he cared for the family, because family relationships are too important to allow things that we have to cause major divisions. And God wanted Abram to bless others, and God was working in his life to make this happen. Abram wanted to see God bless Lot. Abram's heart and character were right before God. He was honorable and compassionate. Abram's heart was full of love for his nephew Lot and his eyes or the eyes of his heart were on the Lord but Lot's eyes were on the world and so Abram's life testifies to the reality and Lot's that fulfillment does not come by getting what we want Fulfillment comes by receiving what God wants for each of us. Abram was asking himself, am I doing my part to maintain peace? Have I done everything I can do to resolve this conflict? Well, let's see what he proposed to his nephew Lot there in Genesis chapter 13 and verses 9 through 11, the Bible says this, Abram talking to Lot, is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. Then Lot chose all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves, the one from the other. So Abraham's plan was we can solve the conflict if we separate ourselves, and he allowed Lot to choose where he wanted to go. Abram was growing in his faith, and he knew that God would provide for him. Abraham loved Lot and wanted the best for him. So, Lot chose. 
but he put his own wants, his desires, in what we would call the world. He didn't consult God, and uh, he wanted for himself. Abram put Lot's interest above his own. So Abram was learning to love the Lord with all his heart and love others as he loved himself. He considered Lot as more important than himself. Paul, there in Philippians chapter 2 and verses 3 through 4, says, Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but on every man also on the things of others. Abram was full of love for Lot. And the Bible says in 1 John 4.18, Perfect love casteth out fear. Lot did not fear what would happen. He knew the Lord would bless him. And Lot's blessing would depend on if he trusted God, especially at this critical juncture. Lot had his heart set on pleasing himself. And he looked out on the plains of the Jordan uh, River, looked on each side and saw the land and its resources and uh, even as far as the Dead Sea and south of it to Zoar <clears throat> and uh, in that time there were streams that had been channeled so that you could irrigate and so of course he would choose the very best <clears throat> and that's what he did and and those streams are even there today and still used for irrigation of their crops and their pasture lands so Zoar was south of the Dead Sea, and it was one of five towns there in the area that had their own king. The towns were Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, Zebom, and Zoar. And if you remember, because of their sinfulness, of the people that lived there, God would pronounce judgment on these cities. Only Zoar would be spared, and that was because of, of Lot. Lot asked the angels that were there uh, to destroy the cities if he could go and find safety at this little town. And the angels agreed to let Lot go there. <clears throat> so he saw all of this and thought that it would be the very best. There was the fertile uh, there was a fertile river 
and the irrigation uh, streams. There was uh, uh, springs flowing from the hills and the mountains, and it was like Eden. And uh, it was also like Egypt. And so the land was very fertile, so that's why he chose it, but he did not consult God. He knew what he wanted and thought it was best. So Lot chose all of the plain of Jordan for himself. Abram wanted to please God, but Lot wanted to please himself. So sometimes the best the world has to offer leads to emptiness, and that is what happened, uh, as we would find out in the future. Lot would lose all he had. His wife turned into a salt uh, it was a salt pillar, and uh, he ended up in a cave with his two daughters. But Abram put the Lord first, and he was blessed by all of the Hebrew people that were his seed. <clears throat> and it said that Lot... He journeyed to the east, and uh, it was east of where Eden was, and the Lord drove out Adam and Eve to the east. Cain, who killed his brother Abel, also went to the land of Nod, which was on the east of Eden, and also Babylon was there where the tower was built. And so traveling to the east, it symbolized uh, sin and exile. So Lot made a choice based on what he wanted and did not seek God's overall guidance and didn't even seek God. So let's look on to see what happened. We know what happened to Lot. He lost everything in the future. Abram, we find out in Genesis chapter 13, verses 14 through 18. This is what happened. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art, northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed be also numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abram removed his tent and came back and dwelt in the plain of, of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. So Lot was looking out for himself. God told Abram to look to the north and the south and the east and the west. Abram only needed to trust and obey God, and God would 
provide all that he needed and more. God told him, All the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And that's exactly what happened in the future. And over the next 400 years, God grew the Hebrew nation from that one man, Abram and his wife, Sarah. God was faithful to keep his promises. And he can do above and beyond what any of us can even think about. Abram would live in the land of promise where God told him to go. He would live there as an outsider looking for a city which has foundations whose builder and maker is God. That's Hebrews 11:10. So God was saying you can look at the ground, look at the dust. You know, how do you count any of the dust particles? That's how many Hebrews there will be. He said, look at the stars and try to count them. If you can number them, that's how many there will be in the Hebrew nation. And so your seed is going to conquer and take over the promised land. So Abram's, his family, his descendants, you would not be able to count them. He told him, he told him to walk through the land. Now, now that was symbolic. He didn't walk over all of the ground, but his people did. And they walked over every inch of it because there was so many of them 400 years later. And there in Deuteronomy 11:24, God says, Every place whereon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours. So what did he do. What did Abram do? He built an altar and he worshiped God. He was learning to trust God and obey Him as the Lord grew His faith with all of these things that happened in His life. And God does the same thing for each of us as he grows us in our faith through the work of the Holy Spirit, through the work of his word, and through knowing him, serving him, loving him, praying to him. So he came and dwelt on the plains of Mamre. Now, that was not a city. It was uh, a large area that was known by that man's name, and it was close to Hebron, and it was uh, about, about 13 miles south, southeast uh, of Jerusalem 
it was about 19 miles from there, and it was a high place, the highest place there in Palestine. It was over 3,000 feet above sea level, and there was water resources there and a lot of fertile ground. And it had been, and still is, that way now. And it has been for about 5,000 years. It is also the location of a place uh, that is called Machpelah, uh, where Abram bought land to bury Sarah and uh, himself, of course, Isaac, Jacob, Rebekah, and his other wife, Leah, are all there. Despite the ups and downs, Abram trusted God, and the Lord fulfilled his promise to Abraham and all of the Hebrew folks to follow him. So we are to trust God when we have conflicts in our relationships with other people. So how do we do this? We pray as an act of worship, lift up those that you might have some tension with and also as you pray it might come to mind someone that you should be praying for and you can you can pray for them as well and then we need to look at our pride how do we compare to our lord and savior what is the level of our humility? We need to go to God and ask him to show us if we have an area where we are prideful. And this might be getting the best of us. We have to remember that pride knocks us down. Humility lifts us up. An important thing to remember. It's a great concept. We need to be humble. We need to care for others. We need to serve others. And then, if you need to have, have that difficult uh, conversation with someone, Go ahead, have that conversation, and get it resolved. That's important. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for being the healer of our relationships. May we recognize that we have that need for you in the midst of of a conflict. Help us to have the right attitude and help us to worship and pray as we lean on the Lord Jesus. And he gives us all of the confidence that we need in the midst of a conflict. Our Lord, we ask that you would guide us, Lord, and that we would understand that we need to be humble and that we need to put others first, Lord, and that will help us have all of the confidence that we need to solve these problems that come 
into each of our lives. And I pray this in the name of our Savior, our Lord, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen.